three of us select. And maybe we should just quickly introduce ourselves. So, Kathy Angel, Steph Lander, and Leslie Crosby. And the book we read is On My Swedish Island, Discovering the Secrets of Scandinavian Well-Being by Julie Katterson Lindahl. And then we're, we're just quickly going to um, touch on why we chose this book. Okay, so when I looked at the bibliography, at first I wasn't really going to pick this book. I wasn't very interested in it. But it wasn't until I did the cultural paper and I realized how much of the way I am is because of my my heritage, and at least a good part of it was, was um, Norwegian, that I, I got a whole lot more interested in learning more about it. And I chose this book because I wanted to learn and feel a deeper connection to my skin and um, Taking this class and, and the foundation class kind of opened my eyes to how little I knew, um, and I wanted to do something to change that. So, um, like, at the end, I kind of wanted to continue on um, with the learning process and um, also wanted to learn about holistic practices in Scandinavian culture because um, that's something I have rarely heard about. And I, um, I have personally always found nature to be very healing and where I turn to um, on sort of a spiritual level and never really understood why. And then I read the bibliography of this book and I just felt really compelled to um, hear this woman's story because it speaks to that very much. And then um, I am also a part Norwegian and while we have, I have never really identified with any particular piece of my heritage, um, this book has really made me very excited about my Scandinavian ancestry and um, I just wanted to learn as much of it. But this is a good jumping off point for me in terms of exploring that a little bit more. So quickly, I'm just going to talk about um, the summary of the book, the author um, was raised in America by, uh, her father was Scottish, her mother was German, and they really instilled that kind of um, modern day American value system of work really hard, keep yourself busy and active and you know, you will live the good life, and she really subscribed to that philosophy and um, became an international consultant, was living in London, was going to the gym to stay healthy, and. Um, I don't know that she had this epiphany at this point yet, but she married a Swedish man and fell in love, and his family had had this island home for generations. And they then, after they were married, had twins. And they were both maxed out, exhausted, crabby with each other, living in Stockholm. And she proposed the idea of why don't we go live on the island and, for a year and just see kind of what life is like, you know, just shift gears a little bit and see what life is like. Um, and I just quickly wanted to read her words in the introduction it really gives a nice flavor for you know, what she was, who she is and why she wrote this book. So I'm an American living on a small island in Sweden. Here I have had the privilege to become immersed in a magnificent source of inspiration that I would like to share with you, the energy-giving power of nature. My island, with its ancient forests and clear waters, is symbolic of Nordic culture, where there are traditions rich in their connection to the outdoors. In this place, I have learned to appreciate my world by bringing my life in tune with it, by changing my patterns to experience the seasons and their beauty. Something happened to me here that I think could benefit other people, even if they do not live on a small Swedish island. So that's how she brings the reader into the book. And then the book is, from there, is an exploration of her relationship with nature and totally living on this island. Um, and just the premise of well-being from the Scandinavian perspective. Well-being is derived from nature and from taking part in everything nature has to offer while paying attention to nature's rhythms and order. The result of this lifestyle is personal wellness, which in turn allows us more effective global citizens. So that's just the premise from which she's, or the mindset from which she's writing the this book. Okay, the, the Scandinavian philosophy is is basically to get outside, enjoy it, and there is there's no impediment by weather, and they have this great quote, there is no bad weather, only bad clothes. <laughs> so, um, so it really doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or 40 below, you just you get out and you're in nature. And so they believe that being in motion with nature is the way to achieve your fitness instead of going to a gym. They're just outside skating, skiing, biking. The whole family does this. In the summer, there's boating. In, you know, so they change their the way that they're in nature by seasons. But um, so it, it's just 
it's really part of their being to be outside and they do this as a family or they do it as an individual to just attain a personal sense of space and a time for reflection so it's used you know it's used both ways as a personal time or as a family time and the activities are um, it's it's just their way of life and the author herself like quickly um she and her family you know because they live on this island they shoot um talks about they have people just skate by, like her mm -hmm. skate by, and um, it's really available to everybody and everyone, so, and when she first uh, got to Sweden, she and her then soon-to-be husband wanted to go out for a run, and he said, where did, did she say, where, where can we go, or, she, she, said, what are, she asked, what are the rules, and he said, what are you talking about, I don't understand, and she said, well, I want to know if I'm going to step on anybody's toes, if I run down this road, or if I, you know, he said, well, no, you can go anywhere you want, because that's, and we'll get into that. Yeah, we will get into that a little bit later, yeah. but, but, but basically there aren't any rules like that. You can go anywhere. So um, the other thing that's very important to them are plants, and they, plants are a big part of their mythology, and they, they believe that plants have a real energy to, to change you, and gardening is very big also is part of what keeps them in tune with the seasons. So there are things that are done seasonally. You plant the garden in the spring, you chop wood in the fall. In the summer there are blueberries to pick and mushrooms to be found <coughs> in the forest. So they, they build their outside time around the rhythm of the seasons as well. Did you want to add? you have something? No, no. I just It's believed that good design promotes um, a sense of well-being. Um, Scandinavian design uses nature as its inspiration. Um, so there is a close connection with nature in Scandinavian style. Commonly used materials are from the land, like wood, stone, wool, linen, um, which is, of course helps keep nature in mind in the home. Um, it's also important in Food, um, because, well, Scandinavia in general is just a really resource-rich um, environment, so all of these things are just so easily accessible and available that um, it's just taking full advantage of what nature has to offer versus going out and harvesting from around the world and bringing stuff back into the... And the other thing that was pointed out is that they do not allow antibiotics in any feed that's fed to animals in that Sweden is one of the top 10 countries in the world for organic gardening, for organic produce in the market. So they just have this really clean, simple way of eating. And designing. Everything and design. just feels very, very clean and simple. And, 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 it's, and it's all about bringing nature inside too. And sort of the last tenet we're going to talk about that was referred to in the book about um, creating wellness through nature is this concept of li 